Week in Review, September 25th, 2023. As always, I'm going to start with comments and then uh, go from there. At Julie Jones, 7034. Hi, Dave. Thanks for the updates each week. Since the announcement of the new location of the games and the dates, many people have speculated about exclusion of the age groups and adaptive athletes based on the four-day schedule. Will announcements about the age groups and adaptive athletes be made soon? I would like to attend the games in 2024, but definitely want to see the age groups. Yes, we'll have announcements on all of that soon. There have been years in the past where we've had a four-day schedule and included um, the age groups. So that is not, just because it's four days does not mean anything in relation to that, at least according to our history. At Cole.S1442, Dave, loving the content. Thank you. Did you ever see the video that Mayhem put out of Rich killing the elk with a bow? He even did it left-handed because his right shoulder was hurt. What did you think about it? No, I didn't see that video. Um, that's pretty cool. Bow hunting's challenging. I'm not really a bow hunter. I do a lot of rifle shooting, obviously. And I... Um, did I talk about this stuff on the last one about the bow stuff? I think I did. I, um, but I have a bow. I shoot bow sometimes. It's just not my thing. I prefer to uh, use firearms because I'm into that. Doing it left-handed because his right shoulder was hurt. That's also really cool. It's Rich Froning. Of course, he's going to do something like that. But uh, killing, an, killing any game with a bow is impressive. Killing an elk, obviously very impressive. So very cool on Rich. I know they're trying to get more into the hunting scene and do more hunting comment, content, so uh, that's pretty cool evolution to see him going down that route. At Velasco AMJ, in local competitions, you see teams of three and twos competing. Would you entertain that idea of having something like that? So originally in the CrossFit Games, we had teams of six competing. Well, not originally, let me say in recent history. I don't remember when we were at the ranch in, um, I think it was 09 was the first year we introduced the formal team concept. I don't remember how big those teams were then, if they were six or not. But once we started going to Carson and even I think maybe early on in Madison, we had teams of six and those were really hard to program for and a logistical um, challenge and nightmare. And I think visually, hard to follow with all those bodies on the field so at some point i don't remember exactly when we, we reduced the number of um people to, to the teams at the games to four and so even when we made that big change it came with a lot of criticism people are always um adverse to change and so they didn't like that when we did it but uh, i'm a huge fan of the teams of four at the games teams of threes and twos um, I would entertain something like that. I don't think at the games, but for other competitions, I think teams of two for sure. Three, yeah. I, I like both of those. I like all of that. Um, I, in the team series at one point, when we ran that online competition, we had teams of um, two. I think it was uh, male, female, male, male, and female, female that we um, created competition for. So yes, uh, all about it. Totally supportive. At the Doogie, um, at the underscore Doogie. Hey Dave, in my experience, many who have been doing CrossFit for years have lost interest in registering for the Open. It'd be awesome if registering entered you into a raffle for ver various prizes, merch bundles, CrossFit courses, games tickets, etc., or included a yearly leather patch that can be put on weight vests, gym bags. I think something like this would be a simple but impactful way of bringing people back and new people into the open. P.S. I'll happily take some game tickets or a job for the idea. I agree. Um, I think it would be cool if there was something like that, a little merch bundle. Um, I think we've done that in years past. I don't know what they did last year, but in years past we had um, prizes more along the line for affiliates and for affiliate owners. Um, because we really want to support our, our, that aspect of the com community, the affiliates, and, and them uh, rallying their members, obviously. So we've done stuff around the affiliate owners. I don't know if we've done stuff around individuals. It's a good idea. A yearly leather patch that could be put on weight vests and gym bags, etc. That's also a really good idea. We've done virtual badges for sure that I remember. 
but I don't know if we did uh, anything with an actual physical product, but that is a good idea. If we did any of your idea, if we do any of your ideas, I'll give you some game ticket, games tickets, but uh, not a job. But thank you for the suggestion. At Lorenzo Gonzalez 6646, games in Fort Worth, how close were other cities to being picked? And judging by the days of the games, does this mean that age group, same question. So yeah, so I guess I didn't talk about that. Yeah, so the games are in Fort Worth. Um, we're really excited about that. I'm really excited about it. It's an amazing venue. We actually toured it um, three years ago. So I guess um, 2021 and um, toured that with a number of other cities in when we were selecting the next venue after Madison. After I left, they ended up extending in Madison for a couple years. And then when I came back, um, I decided we wanted to take a look at a, another venue, take it somewhere else. And Fort Worth, since it's somewhere I had toured a few years before that, quickly popped back on our radar, talked to some of the people on our team, and they discussed that Fort Worth was still interested started looking into it and the dates and everything worked out. And I really do want to convey that how beautiful the facility is. And it was built in 2000, I think 18 or 19 and at a cost of like $800 million. So it's really modern, really state of the art um, in a great area. There's a lot to do in that Fort Worth, obviously Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth area. Uh, even in when we went to Madison, we had hotel issues. There'd be a point where if you didn't get a hotel in time, you were staying really far out of the city. There will, there will be no, um, there won't be any hotel issues in this area because it's such a major metropolitan area. And also travel for a lot of people will be way easier. It's centrally located in the States and um, international airport. So there's a lot of positives. And obviously um, the venue is amazing and it all starts in a big, in a big um, regard, it all starts with the venue being appropriate for the competition and what we want to do with the competition. And you kind of work out from there. Even when we were selecting other cities, we looked at venues. Um, you, you, the city might be great, but if they don't have the right venue for what we need to do at the time, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter how great the city is. This venue is great for what we're gonna do. And also the um, city, is an added benefit of being such a great place and a lot of things to do, a lot of great restaurants. So really excited about the location and bringing the games to a new area like that. At Mitchell Collins 5840, if someone claims to be a Navy SEAL, Special Forces, Delta Force or whatever, What's a good couple of screening questions to weed them out? I served in the Air Force and it never occurred to me to try to try and claim some special status. I mean, I don't like, I, I'm not gonna tell you what questions to ask. That, those are kind of um, the questions that we know to ask of individuals to screen them. I think are, I feel like they were earned and, and it's almost an inner code of what is said to someone to vet them. And why I say this, if I tell you what my personal go-tos are, if you use that someone, you might be speaking to a SEAL and they might assume you're a SEAL. And so um, I'm not gonna provide any good screening questions. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's weird of me. Maybe, maybe I should be so you can screen people and feel or, or determine, find out if they're not a, um, who they claim to be, but I'm not gonna go there. At Kurt Thomas Hunt, Dave looks like he's about to do a 10 hour Call of Duty stream. As always, I appreciate these. Yeah, so someone else, a good friend, hit me up and said, hey, you look like you're gaming with the headset. So what I did this time, I actually tried messing with the little old Yeti I have. That's what they call these. Couldn't get it to work, couldn't figure it out. And then so I just left my new headset plugged in and just set it right here. And in test, it worked fine. We'll see if it works for this whole thing. So I am still using it, but I'm just not wearing it so I don't look like a gamer. At Fam 
UAKD. In reference to the shooting matches at the ranch, I would think you have a competitive advantage on your own land. Does someone else plan the match and how do you prevent the advantage? I don't, does someone, no, nobody else plans a match. I don't think I have a competitive advantage on my own land because I lose often. <laughs> I'm not always winning. There's plenty of shooters who do better than I do on my own land. I, um, how do I prevent the advantage? I set new stages every time we shoot here and I move the targets around a lot for those stages and I don't shoot those. There's one set of targets right behind this door that I'll shoot from the doorway. That's why that, there's that little stand there because that's a little barricade. I move it in front of the door and I'll practice up the hill. So there's a set of targets up the hill that I train on a regular basis, but the rest of them I don't really shoot that often. And so, and I'll move them a lot for these matches and I uh, create new courses of fire that I don't practice or run through. And that's how I prevent the advantage. This weekend I went and shot a two day match in San Luis Obispo and I did really bad. The first day I couldn't believe how poorly I was shooting. I, uh, it's a gun I haven't shot in about several months since May. I look back at my log book and I haven't shot it since May. Um, and that's right around the time you know, got really heavy with all the game stuff and CrossFit stuff. So day two, I rallied and uh, cleared my head with a long ruck the uh, afternoon after shooting so poorly on day one. And I did better on day two, much better. Still not where I know I should be, but um, it was a good time. Anyways, close out this discussion with, again, Fort Worth and and any other changes or any other announcements we will be making, we'll be doing those soon. Fort Worth, um, I'm really excited about the fans, the spectators, the athletes, all gonna have a uh, great experience and we're gonna be able to put on a spectacle like no other and a show that will be amazing. So uh, as always, ask any questions and comments and I will try to answer them next week. Thanks for um, listening.